U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris is out campaigning in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She has reaffirmed her support for Joe Biden as more Democrats come forward questioning his ability to run for office again. But one thing we know about our president, Joe Biden, he is a fighter. And he is the first to say, when you get knocked down, you get right back up. So... We will continue to fight. We will continue to organize. And in November, we will win. We will win. Fundamentally, this election will come down to this. President Biden and I fight for the American people. Donald Trump does not. Well, joining me live is Democrat Marianne Williamson, author, speaker, and has been running as a Democratic presidential candidate. Great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us, Marianne. Joe Biden believes he is the best person to run for president. If he continues to run, what concerns do you have? I have the same concerns that millions of Americans have, the majority of Americans have. He obviously believes that he's the best person to run, but the majority of Americans don't agree with that. Our concerns, of course, if nothing else, are that we keep talking about Joe Biden rather than what Democrats should be talking about right now. We should be talking about what we're going to do for the American people over the next four years, how we're going to improve the material conditions of people's lives at a time when almost 40 percent of Americans say that they are uh, skipping meals regularly and in order to pay their rent, a time when people are selling their blood plasma, a time when the majority of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. This family drama is keeping us from the campaign that we should be having. And that's why so many of us feel strongly that the president needs to stand down and to do so immediately. So who do you think the best person to lead the Democrat Party is and why? Well, I'm on that ballot, obviously. I think I am. And that's because I believe that my personality, my energy, and my agenda are a match for Donald Trump. I don't think any establishment Democrat is going to come forward with the kind of excitement and energy that is necessary in order to defeat his hotbed of grievances. The same old, same old will not win this. Any status quo positioning, any status quo politician will not win this. We need to make it clear to the American people that we have a vision going forward, not just a record behind us, but a vision of possibility for the average American. Donald Trump offers a vision of possibility for a very, very few Americans. His his very rich friends at Mar-a-Lago. Now, he covers that up. He's a carnival barker. He pretends to be all about the forgotten man, but the forgotten man in his book are his very, very, very wealthy friends. We have a vision, and we need to articulate that vision by which people will have universal health care, as you have it in Australia, tuition-free college and tech school, as you have it in Australia, subsidized child care, tuition, uh, a guaranteed living wage, affordable housing, dismantling America's drug war, waging peace instead of just waging war effectively, treating the climate emergency like the emergency that it is, as opposed to Donald Trump, who is talking about climate change as a hoax. I'm the one who can say those things without being tied up with uh, undue uh, financial connections to insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, big oil, military contractors, big food. The American people know what's really happening here, which is a kind of corporate dominance of our government. And we need someone, I think, from outside that system who says it the way it is. The American people are smart, the American people are decent, but the American people are desperate for real change. The Democrats have suppressed you, though, Marianne, and other candidates. Why have they done this? They have done this because we have this political media uh, industrial complex. They are a corporate power themselves. That's what's so wrong here, Janie. The system was corrupted from the beginning. They basically decided that Joe would be the candidate, and they made no bones about that. Jamie Harrison, the head of the DNC, Instead of the traditional role of the party standing in the background and letting the voters decide in a genuine democratic process who would be the nominee, he unabashedly said that he saw his job as helping uh, Joe Biden be renominated. And so, all other voices, including mine, were suppressed. We need to end that pattern right now going forward so that in the next uh, in the next period of time, we have the vibrant, robust, democratic conversation that we should have been having for the last year and a half. 
So what does this say about the unity or lack of unity for the Democrat Party? And I've noticed on your social media page during the last day or so, you've spoken about certain um, television networks not allowing you on their platforms. Well, I think that a mainstream media channel is providing a kind of quasi-governmental function, and therefore they owe it to the American people to fairly cover all FEC-registered qualified candidates. It's not right for MSNBC or CNN to decide who they deem a credible candidate. To those people, the idea of a qualified candidate is someone qualified to perpetuate the system as it is. The American people are sick of the system because the American people know that it does not serve them. Our governmental and economic structures are at this point functioning, functioning in a way as to enable the wealth and the wealth creation opportunities of a very few Americans at the expense of the majority. And people know it on both the left and the right. So it's very important that media and uh, political elites who really brought us to this disaster now get off their arrogant high perches and allow this thing to open up, allow there to be an open primary, an open convention, and let the people decide. The, the way to deal with assaults to our democracy is through the practice of more democracy. And that's what we need. And I hope that that's what will be uh, begun this weekend. It needs to happen or we will lose uh, in a terrible way in November, in a way that could also bring down uh, the Democrats in the House and in the Senate. We must change direction and we must change direction immediately. The Republican National Convention is next week and Donald Trump is formally uh, set to formally accept the party's presidential nomination and announce his vice president. Who do you think he'll choose? Oh, there's no way to ever predict what Donald Trump is going to do. But I'll tell you this much, it will be a shrewd choice. He's shrewd. And uh, it will not be easy. It will not be easy for us. Whoever it is, uh, we better get going because um, he's, he's really something and we need to really be something too. But we can't be if we're just sitting dithering around protecting Joe Biden's feelings at a time when we need to be protecting American democracy. Kamala Harris is the vice president, as we know. If uh, things change and Joe Biden steps down for whatever reason and Kamala Harris is the president, how do you see that playing out for the Democrats? Well, listen, it, it, what should happen now is that this thing should open up. Kamala should run. I assume she will. Gavin Newsom might run. I'm on the ballot. Some other people might jump in. And if that is who the people decide and there's real energy and there's real truth telling and there's a real commitment to advocacy for the working people of the United States, uh, then I think she'll be fine. Uh, if She's the person that the people decide. My point is that it should not be an elite who decide we're going with Kamala. That was the mistake we made in the decision to go with Joe. That's what's important to me now, that we realign ourselves with real democratic principles. And then we'll be fine. We'll be fine in November if we do that, but only if we do that. All right. And um, finally, you've mentioned um, over the past week or so that Democrats have smeared your name, Corinne Jean-Pierre, um, certainly one of those people that uh, you mentioned. What did she say? Uh, she got right right after I announced my candidacy. She got on the presidential press podium and made fun of me and talked. I think of obviously a planted question from a um, reporter is the is President Biden concerned about Marianne Williamson getting into the race? And she, in an obviously scripted way, said, "No, he doesn't have a crystal ball to fit whatever." It was just it was part of a narrative that they've created to distract people from uh, recognizing that I'm not only a serious candidate, but I think the most serious about the issues that matter most to the American people. Marianne Williamson, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. And from Tuesday onwards, Sky News will bring you complete live coverage of the Republican National Convention where Donald Trump will accept the party's presidential nomination. Our Washington correspondent, Annalise Nielsen, will be live all week from the convention floor in Wisconsin. And former Ambassador Joe Hockey will also join Sky exclusively for his expert analysis.